Hello everyone, my name is Zach and welcome to my channel. Amongst other things, I'm a reenactor and a jouster. And if you've been subscribed to my channel for a while, then you'll know that I'm currently having a new harness made. My old harness is um, in a southern German style or northern Italian kind of Tyrolean style. And I felt that I would like to have a English style harness to match the fact that I am English. So I decided to go for an effigy that is found in a church in Lingfield, which is very close to where I live. It's only about half an hour's drive away, which is amazing. And I was able to go and get some photos of it, some really close up photos, really get in there, get loads and loads of detail on it. And so when I sent these photos through to my armourers, which are Art of Steel in Ukraine, um, I kind of thought, well, that's it. OK, this effigy is so detailed, there won't be any questions about it. It's just do the effigy, please, guys. Um, they have been amazing and the communication has been brilliant. Um, they are, have finished the leg armour and you'll be seeing pictures of that in this video. Um, but I just wanted to share with you some of the things that we discovered in reproducing an effigy and some of the questions that you might end up having and some of the decisions that you might need to make. So first of all, um, effigies are interesting because they are sculptures of someone lying on their back. Um, they are extremely detailed, generally. Uh, again, all of these statements tend to be general statements. So, um, so apologies if you know an exact example that contradicts what I'm saying. They tend to be really um, detailed. And that is because the point of an effigy is to allow the prayers of the monks or the priests um, in the church to find you better when you're in purgatory. See, effigies were gifted to churches as a reminder to the people in the church to pray for their Lord who has died. And these prayers would cut down the amount of time that they spent in purgatory. Uh, so then they could get to heaven faster. They thought that these prayers would be more effective if the person who was praying um, knew the person very well or was able to link to them um, particularly well. So these effigies were very detailed and the idea was that they would look as much like the person did in life as possible. And this extends to whatever they're wearing as well. So their armour and their clothing uh, is meant to represent them in their life. And you even see this in certain individuals who maybe chose not to be presented in armour because they didn't feel like they were warriors. So what we can say is that this effigy in the Lingfield Church is extremely detailed, but there are still some problems. First of all, he's lying on his back. So obviously there are some areas that are completely obscured around the back. There's also some areas which are hidden by other aspects of the sculpting. So the inside of the leg, for example. Now these two uh, facts put together made it an interesting question about what to do with the creases, that is the upper leg armour. Now, on really close inspection, we came to the decision that the inside leg had a um, leather flap that was riveted to it, and then that would come round and attach to a metal plate, which would then buckle on the outside. Therefore, you wouldn't need any hinges. You would just have the buckle and the leather piece. The real question then was how much of the uh, um, of the plate should, how big the plate should be, I should say. So the plate itself, how far should it go round the thigh? Now, personally, I didn't want to have um, fully enclosed creases. Now, this isn't because I'm against them. I actually really like the idea of fully enclosed creases, and it is a very English thing, uh, particularly in the early part um, to the middle of the century. But um, I don't own my own horse. I don't own my own saddle. So when I'm riding, um, my leg armour can really um, damage the 
tack of the horse, the saddle of the horse, if I'm not careful. So for me personally, my decision was to have that back plate um, not go all the way around, to not have fully enclosed creases and instead have something that would allow me to um, to ride a bit um, a bit easier and to not damage the saddle underneath. This is something that I could always change in future if I did get my own horse, if I did get my own saddle that I would be happier to uh, um, to sit on in fully enclosed creases then that's certainly um, changing the plate that's on there is not something that would be very difficult to do. Another thing that is often hidden is um, at the back of the greave there can be a catcher, a little um, kind of staple which catches the strap that goes around from the demi grip. This is something that isn't visible on the effigy, quite understandably, because the back of the leg is lying on the floor. So we don't know whether it was actually on the original. It's something that I really kind of wanted on my leg armour this time around. My previous leg armour, which is a simple Italian style armour, doesn't have this. And the um, the strap can often slip off the back of the greave. This doesn't cause me too many problems, but I do like when it is held in place, that can't cause issues of tightness. You see, if the greave is different to your leg, um, when you do the strap up to a certain tightness, if that then slips off the greave to your leg, which is going to be thinner, um, then it will mean that, that that strap is then looser than it should be. Another decision that we had to make was whether or not to add a pin to the front of the demi grieve, And you can see some examples here of what I'm talking about. Now my old armour does have a pin like this and it close, it's one of the T pins that um, turns and closes. This is something that I really wanted on the armour. There's a lot of effigies that don't show these um, and it's possible that they didn't actually include pins, locating pins on the uh, front of the demi grieve. However, this is definitely a technology that was around at the time and seemed to be quite prevalent. It's possible that it was left off of the, um, of the effigy it's also possible that it was damaged, maybe in carving or in the 500 years since, uh, and it had been then uh, evened up and, and repaired. There are a lot of effigies that have been repaired, and they're not always repaired to replace what is existing, but rather to uh, just the best of the knowledge of the person. Many of them may well have been damaged in the 16th century, so we don't have... Um, photographs of what they looked like beforehand to put them back to how they were. There are some that you can definitely tell when they've been repaired. Uh, for example, if something has been knocked off and someone has replaced it, then that is a, quite an easy thing to do. I've mentioned in a previous video that some, uh, um, some feet have been destroyed on some effigies and you can tell because the, uh, the soles that have been put on the replaced feet um, don't look like medieval souls. However, something small like a pin would be reasonably easy to be knocked off uh, and the way that you would probably repair it would be that you would just um, sand it flat and, uh, uh, and knock the one off the other leg just to make sure that it's, um, it's symmetrical. Another thing that we had to decide was the height of the crease. Now, that is kind of up for debate. I was very keen that I wanted to still be able to easily mount my horse. My main uh, way that I use it is for jousting, but also I do want it to be um, accurate as much as possible. There wasn't really any evidence of articulated parts to the top of the crease. There may have been some underneath the, uh, um, the fold, but it's hard to say. This particular effigy doesn't actually show a male skirt coming out from underneath the fold, but it does have quite a long fold, so it may well be covering the top and maybe covering some articulation plates. But in the end, uh, Alexei, who was making the armour, 
said that he would like to go for one without articulation um, because there's no evidence of it on the um, on the effigy. I think that that's absolutely fine. I think I'll still be able to do everything that I should because there is a lot of um, evidence. There's even originals that do not have any articulation at the top of the leg. I just wanted to add before I finish here, um, there's a really cool extra that Alexi has made for me, which is a key to turn the locking pin on my demi groove. I'm just going to show you a little video here, which I think is really cool. Um, I absolutely love the attention to detail that Alexi has been putting into this harness and absolutely have got up the utmost respect for the entirety of Art of Steel. They are absolutely amazing and to carry on working on my armour um, when, um, when their country is at war is absolutely astonishing and I'm so pleased to be able to continue to support them uh, through this difficult time. Now there's an interesting thing that came up when um, we when Alexi and Art Steel shared the photos of the leg armor, and um, someone asked a question on their Facebook page about the placement of the hinges on the greaves, because the placement of the lower hinge is higher up than on some examples. Now the question was very good. It said, "Well, if the hinge is there." then doesn't that mean that it's difficult to open the greave? Now, I don't have the example here, but uh, um, you can see the photos on the, uh, on the screen now. And absolutely, this placement of the hinge, I think, will alter the way that it opens. Certainly, from what Alexi said, that is the case. It doesn't open as wide as hinge was lower down. But, actually that isn't so much of a problem. One thing that we sometimes forget is that armour only needs to move enough for the person inside it. And that includes articulation, but it also includes things like being able to get inside. Now, uh, I've had this example with my current armour and the cuirass there. The angles on the cuirass have made it very difficult to open. You can't open it all the way because of the overlap and where the hinges are. That's absolutely fine for me because all it needs to do is it needs to open wide enough for me to be able to fit inside. These greaves may not open all the way. You might not be able to fold them all the way open, but actually that doesn't matter as long as I can fit my legs inside. And I'm absolutely certain that I can because Alexi has been working from a leg cast that I sent him, two leg casts, so um, we've got evidence that my legs do fit inside these greaves. You can fit them on, um, and that's all you need. You don't need to open it all the way. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching to the end. If you have watched to the end, then that means that you like it, so why don't you just hit the like button to let me know that you've made it this far. Uh, if you haven't already, please do subscribe. I am going to be doing more videos in this vein, both about my new harness and also thinking about some of the problems that you might have when reproducing um, armor from different situations. Thank you very much, guys, and I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.